Hi, everybody. Um, we're going to be making pastry today. This is the inaugural episode of Eat My Pie. Ba -ba -da -da. I don't have a theme song yet, but I'm calling it Eat My Pie because I think that's fantastic. I like to get all of my ingredients ready first uh, before we start getting ready to go. So I prefer to make my pastry in a glass bowl. Um, you can make your pastry in whatever bowl that you want to make your pastry in. So there. Um, we've got all the ingredients. Ba -ba -ba. And the butter, which is in the fridge because it should be cold, and it is unsalted because it should be unsalted. Um, the recipe is right here. The other thing that you're going to need is a pastry blender. I've tried to make this without a pastry blender, and it doesn't work as well. Um, you can buy this at the dollar store. Um, you don't need to go to a fancy, expensive store and buy a really expensive one, because they all work the same. And a fork. Yay, fork. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first you add in the flour. And then you add in your sugar and your kosher salt. I like to just do a little quick toss, mix all that shit up. And then put in your butter bits. And then you take your place your pastry blender and you just sort of do this. Okay, the consistency of the butter and the flour and sugar mixture, it should be um, what you would classify as mealy. So it's all sort of in little bits in the bottom. This is when you take your freezing cold water. I usually like to put a glass of water in the freezer with some ice cubes uh, right before I get started so that it's really, really, really cold. And one tablespoon at a time. One tablespoon at a time, adding it in. And then take your fork and start from the, I like to start from the outside edge and just sort of blend it all in like this. And make sure that you're getting you're mixing it as well as you can. Like this. Okay. Add another tablespoon. Uh, I find, well, depending on the day, sometimes it's three tablespoons, sometimes it's four. It's never more than four tablespoons. When I first started learning to bake, and I taught myself everything, um, I was really daunted by pastry. I started with cakes because it seemed they seemed a little easier. Um, I was really daunted by pastry, and everybody kept saying, "Oh, pastry is so temperamental." And it, I mean, it is. It's not not temperamental. My granny used to say, "Be nice to your food, so that it will be nice to you." Um, so you can see it's starting to get a little glommy. Um, then I found this recipe, and this recipe is pretty much no fail. Um, I'm just going to add a half a tablespoon, because this is already starting to get a little glommy. Once it starts to, where you can actually form it into a ball, that is when you know that it's ready. And I can form this into a ball. So that was that was only two and a half tablespoons. Again, I don't know why it depends on the day. Sometimes it's more. So now that you can form it into a ball, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, in the interim, I have preheated my oven to 400 degrees because I am blind baking. Um, means that you bake it before you put your ingredients in for the pie. I'm making a uh, coconut cream pie today and that requires a baked shell. Okay, so I like to make it into, oh, well, that's about good. Just like a little, like a little mm, hockey puck. It's gonna be sort of sticky, which is what you want because when you put the flour, you're going to be taking on extra flour once you flour your pastry mat. So you want it to be sort of, I like it, a little sticky. Some people don't. Here we go. So, let's flour the mat. I 
I use cake and pastry flour. All purpose works just as well. Um, if you use your knuckles and just sort of knuckle around the thing, it reduces the risk of the pastry actually breaking. Okay, I've got my roller out. Just put a little extra stuff. And you just start rolling. Start from the middle, like this, different directions that you can make a circle. Always, always, always keep it nice and floured so that it doesn't stick to your roller. Um, if you like really thick pastry, like for quiches or, um, I don't know, if you just really like thick pastry, you can keep it on the thicker side. Um, f for the coconut cream pie that I'm making today and consequently the blueberry tarts that I'm also making today, um, I want my pastry just a little bit thinner. So, move you. You should also, in the interim, pick it up and make sure that the mat is okay, which I have not done. Ah. Shell. Pop it in a pie shell. Just like that. Easy peasy. Into the pie shell you go. This pastry doesn't necessarily stick to itself like fondant does, which is really frigging annoying. Okay, so once it's in your pastry shell, you're going to trim off the excess however you want. As you can see, I'm leaving a little bit extra, and I'll show you why in a sec. Okay. Some of these sides have more than others, but whatever. Um, I like to just fold it in on itself. because we're going to do something decorative with the edges. Um, edges are fun and like have fun with them. Sometimes I roll out some extra pastry and use a cookie cutter and um, just cut little thin things. When adding pastry to itself, does that make any sense? When you're adding pastry bits to other pastry bits, uh, what works really well as, um, as a glue is just a little bit of milk and you can use just your fingertip, a little bit of fingertip, a little milk, Put it on the pastry and then add the pastry bit to it. Okay. So as you can see, I'm building a little like wall. Just by folding itself in on itself. Okay. So once you have this, you can do whatever you want with the edges. Um, traditional fluting, if that's even the word that I'm looking for, um, take your finger and then your other finger and you're going to pinch and pull the pastry like that so that if you go all the way around with your fingers in the edge, that's one way. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to do one of those and then a little bit farther away and then a little bit farther away. Okay.
So once you've got all this stuff, then I like to take my fork again. My spoon from earlier. And let um, me just sort of do that. little piece of decor because the pie that I'm doing is not going to have a top pastry. You can get a little fancy with the bottom pastry. The good thing about pastry is that if you don't like what you've done, you can just put it back in a ball and roll it out again and start again from the beginning. Who cares? Yay, pastry. Okay, so there we go. I've got um, a pie shell, I think fairly attractive scalloping going on, um, and it fits in. So my oven is now preheated to 400 degrees, and we're going to put it in there for about, I'd say probably about 10 minutes. Uh, when you are blind baking, when you are blind baking, uh, prick the bottom. A lot of people have pie weights, or um, you can do whatever you want. Um, Sometimes I line it with tin foil and then put rice in there or uh, uncooked beans like lentils or whatever. Um, something that will weigh the pastry down. Anything you want really that, that will stop the pastry from bubbling up because that's what pastry is known to do. Now I like to prick it all the way around and then sometimes just keep an eye on it which is what we're going to do today. There we go. It's ready to go into the oven. Mimosas work really well with grapefruit juice. Eight minutes. It's looking super tasty. We have it. A nicely browned, ready to go pastry pie shell. You can use this for quiches or for regular pies. Um, all the rest of that dough that you saw that I had uh, previously cut off of this one, I just put it in a Ziploc baggie and put it in the fridge for later. Um, if you freeze it, you can unfreeze it. It may require a little bit more flour when you're flouring the mat because it tends to be a little squishy when it thaws out because of the thawing process. <laughs> um, anywho, welcome to Eat My Pie and I hope that you will come back and watch more episodes and if you have any questions about anything uh, please leave them in the comments and um, I'll see you soon. Bye!